Hi everyone, this is GKCS. We are back with a problem from Hacker Earth. Uh, this problem has been suggested by Akash, who's from ABS College, uh, which is in Ghaziabad. Uh, and I actually have a good friend, Shikhar, who's taken uh, a part of square root decomposition from, from that same college. So, hi Akash. And what we are going to be talking about in this problem is an array. So, that's it. The array name is going to be A. Now, the size of the array is n, so indexes go from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, and what you need to do is you need to take all the sub arrays in this array such that each of these sub arrays has the same number of odd numbers as they have in the numbers. Okay, so if I take an example 1, 2, 3, 4, the number of odd numbers in this is 2, and the number of even numbers in this is 2. So this is, let's say, a special subarray. And with the original array, you need to count the number of special subarrays in this original array. Okay, take your time. It's a very simple question, actually. Uh, all you need to do is, you know, in the brute force way, find out all possible subarrays in this given array. Amongst them, find out those subarrays which have the same number of odd numbers as they have even numbers. Right? Pretty simple. So, like I said, the brute force approach is going to be you taking a start index, iterating through all possible start indexes, and then finding a corresponding end index in it. Right? So, subarray, contiguous block, start and end index. How many possible start and end indexes can we have by through this method, which is NC2? Contiguous blocks, n c2, two ends in size n. So you're choosing two points in a uh, in, in a set of n points. So that is n c2, and that turns out to be order n square. And so the first approach we'll be trying is called divide and conquer. Uh, if you know about merge sort or counting the inversions in an array, this is pretty easy. So the size of the original array is of course from zero to n minus one. Those are the indexes. What we are going to do is we are going to split this array into two parts, right? So that will be 0 to n by 2, and n by 2 plus 1 to n minus 1. If you split this further, you get 0 to n by 4. Split this further and you get 0 to n by 8. I'm going to assume that you just keep going down all the way till you hit 0 to 0. This is a single element array, single element subarray to be specific. And this is going to be a from 1 to 1. And this is n by 4 plus 1 to uh, n by 2, the n index. So we're splitting into 2 up to the point that we're left with just one element. Now, if you have just one element, that means that that array is either having an odd element or an even element. So the original condition of having equal number of even and odd elements is not going to satisfy. So the number of you know, subarrays in this part having the same number of odd and even elements is 0. So you return 0 from here. Right, that makes sense. Uh, over here, again, you'll be returning zero because it's a single element array. And when you're merging the two arrays, is the point when uh, the fun starts. All right. So when we are merging, what we are going to do is we are going to be taking the number of subarrays from the left subarray which satisfy the given condition, plus the number of subarrays in the right part which satisfy the given condition. So that's going to be if the function is f f of the original array, this is going to give you the answer of f of left half plus f of right half plus something else. Okay, what's happened is because we have split the array, we have lost some information. We have lost the information of which are those subarrays which cross through the middle point, right? Because we broke it into two parts. Which are those which cross through the middle point of 0 and 1, such that those subarrays have the same number of odd elements as they have even elements? Okay, taking an example, uh, if I give you the array 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8, individually the answers, you can see the answers to be subarrays 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 
comma three and three comma four. Right, so four is the answer for this subarray. So we return four. This subarray is identical almost in terms of order even. So this will return four. And the merged subarray is this. Now four plus four has to be part of the answer. Four plus four plus one. Notice that four and five are the two elements which which took part in the split. That's the point when we split. Now we are merging them, so we are almost soldering those two elements together. So I call this the soldering point. Alright, two pieces being joined together. This is an important point. Now, if you see four and five, the number of odd and even in this array is equal. But that's not very important. Uh, I'm going to be saying that there's a number k, right? Which is the total number of odd elements in this soldering point minus even elements. So the number of odd elements and even elements, there's just three possibilities here. Either they're equal, one and one, or you have only odd elements in this point, or you have only even elements in this point. So k for me is going to be odd minus even, which is 0, or 2, or minus 2. Okay, three possibilities. So why is k important? Let's see. Head towards the right. Head towards the right. And what you'll see is that whenever you get an odd element, you add 1 to k. Whenever you get an even element, you subtract 1 from k. Okay, so initially your value of k in our given scenario is 0. So we have 0, the starting point. Next element is 6. 6 is an even number, minus 1, which is minus 1 over here. Next element is 7, my, minus 1. 7 is an odd number, plus 1. Minus 1 plus 1 gives you 0. And finally, 8 is an even number. Minus one, zero minus one gives you minus one. Okay. So k, and then you move forward, cumulative sum of the odd minus even numbers. Similarly, go to the left. Go to the left from k. You start from k as zero. Heading to the left, you get three, which is an odd number. So that is three is odd. So that's one, right? Yeah. Over here, you have two which is going to make it minus 1, so 1 minus 1 gives you 0, and finally 1 is going to be 1. So we have head to the left and we have head to the right, and these are numbers we have. Now, how does this help us? This thing, k, is a single unit. Right? That's how, that's how we can think of this. But more importantly, when you're looking at the right part, these are the end indexes that we are looking at, which compulsorily contain 4 and 5, which is the soldering point. These are the end indexes, and these are the possible start indexes of the subarray that we are looking for. Now, if you have minus 1 with you, which is the start index which is going to negate that? 1, 1. Right. Similarly, minus 1 over here, 1 and 1 are the only two possibilities. Okay. Um, what about 0? The only possible start indexes which uh, which still give you zero as a cumulative sum is these two points. So you can take either one, either side, uh, the answer is going to be the same. Zero has two possibilities, which is two plus minus one has two possibilities of one, which is two plus zero again has two possibilities plus minus one has two possibilities. So there are eight possibilities here. And so you have 4 plus 4 plus 8, which gives you 16 as the answer. And if you work this out, you'll see that the answer is 16. I, I actually clarified this. Uh, I wrote a lot of it down and then I wrote up that one. Yeah, you can see that the answer is going to be 16. Okay. If I simplify this to this array, actually that's, that's going to be easier. So this is 1, 2, this is 3, 4. Number of subarrays over here is going to be 1. It's going to be 1 here. Most of them together, you have 1 plus 1 plus. Total over here is going to be 
2 and 3 is the soldering point, so that is 0. You get an even number which is minus 1. You get an odd number here which is plus 1, so that is something like this. Right? And you get 1 plus 1 because you're looking for the corresponding start indexes. So over here you have 2 as your answer. Now, 2 plus 1 plus 1 gives you 4, which is the correct answer. Right, so this is the divide and conquer approach. Pretty neat. The height of this tree is log n. Uh, if, you know, we have discussed this a lot. The height of this tree is going to be log n because the time taken for n to reach 1 when you're going on dividing it by 2 is log n iterations. Uh, and in each level, we do one operation per element in the array. Right, because you're heading to the right and per element you're doing it once. You're heading to the left again per element you're doing it once. So it's order n per level. So you have n log n order time complexity solution. Okay, so this is the divide and conquer approach. Nice, neat, clean, I feel. You know, uh, in fact, it will cross the, it will, it will be within the time limit requirement in the hack work challenge. But there's something better. So, I and Shaleen were talking about the solution and he came up with a better one, which is order n. And let's have a look at that. The final solution is actually very closely tied to how the start and end indexes are related. Okay, so, uh, what do you need to find? You need to find those subarrays which have the same number of odd numbers as even numbers. If you can find, for a given point, the total number of subarrays for which it is an n index. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a point which is 4. It is an n index for subarrays 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. 3, 4. And 4 itself. Okay, so it's an n index for 4 subarrays. Amongst these, you need to find those subarrays which have the same number of odd numbers as even numbers. So that is just 1 to 3, 4 is one subarray, 3, 4 is another subarray. So if you can find the number of satisfying subarrays for all of the subarrays in which 4 is an n index, you can extend that for every single point. Okay, extend that to 1, you have just the subarray 1, which is not satisfying the condition, so that is 0. For 2, you have 2 itself and 1, 2, 1, 0. Overall, that gives you 1. You can do that for 3, you can do that for 4, you can do it for everyone. So, what you're going to do is you're going to sum for all indexes from i equal to 0 to n minus 1. Number of satisfying sub arrays. On that given index, right? I, where, where i is the end index. Now, can we do this efficiently? The answer is yes. Uh, so now what I'm doing is taking a slightly more complicated subarray, uh, complicated array rather, which is going to be 1, 1, 0, 3, 3, 9, 8, 8, 8, 14, right? And because we don't really care about the, the number itself, we just care about whether it's odd or even, we can change this to 0, 1. I'm just taking the last bit in the number. 1, 1. 8 is an odd number, so I'm going to represent it as 0, 0, 0. And 14 will again be 0. So this can be represented as Boolean, odd or even whatever you like, but this is an easy representation. And this is our array now. You remember the value k? k is equal to the odd numbers minus even numbers up to this point, which is k. For this, sub for this array, it's going to be 1 plus 1, which is going to give you 2. Over here it's going to be minus one. It's an odd, it's an even number, so minus one. It's, this is not zero. 
In fact, let's represent that as minus one. Keep things simple. This is minus one, minus one, minus one, and minus one. Now you just need to take the cumulative sum. So one, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay. So this tells us that up to this point, the overall array is, you know, has the same number of odd and even numbers. Now looking at this array, if one is the end index, the cumulative sum up to this point is one. Right? The first element is the end index, cumulative sum up to this point is one. What possible start indexes can it use? Nothing. There's nothing to the left of it. So we move on to two. This element is the end index, cumulative sum is two. What possible start indexes can it use? At what possible start index is the cumulative sum equal to two? Right? That's what we are looking for. Because if there is a point earlier in history when the cumulative sum was 2 and now we have cumulative sum as 2, it means the difference between that point and the current point is 0. Right? So you're looking at that as a possible start index. 2 does not have anything like that in its history, so we just move forward. This is an interesting point. 1. At this point, when we look back in history, we see that the number of ones which have occurred earlier is equal to one. This. So one has occurred once. And so we can say that if this is the end index, one possible start index that we can have is this point. Right? So total number of subarrays having uh, the same number of odd and even elements with this as an index is equal to one. Over here, two. Again, you go back in history, you notice that it has occurred once. So that is a possible sub -array. Um Three. Three has never occurred earlier. So nothing. Zero. Four never occurred. Three occurs once. That is one. Plus. Two has occurred one, two times. So that is two. Plus. One has occurred one, two times. So that is two. Plus zero. Zero has never occurred in this array. Except for now, right? So, one. This makes sense because zero has never occurred in the array previously, but it itself has occurred now. So, zero is the number that we are looking for. So, the total number of uh, sub arrays which are going to make this zero is one in this case. So, that is this. And so, essentially, what you're doing is at every point, you're checking the number of times the frequency of your current sum. So frequency of current sum is what you're checking for. That is added to your answer, right? Then you increment the frequency of current sum. And that's it. In case, of course, your current sum is zero, then you add to the answer plus one. This is option in case your current sum is zero. All right? And that's it. So when you're doing this, each operation is going to take you just order one time per element uh, and you have n elements so that is order n time complexity. Okay. A very easy way to code this, uh, I mean coding this is very easy but uh, coming up to this approach is a little more tricky or maybe it isn't, who knows. <laughs> maybe divide and conquer is a little more tricky for you. So that is it for this interesting problem. Uh, it had two approaches, dynamic programming and this. Both of them are simple in their own ways. Uh, this is doesn't talk really better. In case you have any doubts or suggestions, you leave them in the comments below. Uh, if, if you want to contribute code for this problem, please do so. I'll be happy to add that in the description below. Uh, I'll be taking something interesting in the next session. There are many topics that I have in mind. I'll probably take a poll in the community tab that I have now. So I'm one of the guys in the community tab now. So I'm feeling pretty privileged. Uh, so I'll see you next time then.